Hi there, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you are into planning and checking what you're gonna do with your orchids, have you got a list? I have one. <laughs> it's just I'm at this point that I can't address it because of my very, very volatile weather for the next 10 days. But I'm gonna go through it anyway because I need to gather my thoughts and I thought I'd take you along and tell you what it is that I need to address with the orchids that I have in mind, not knowing what's gonna come around the corner, but these are somewhat, not urgent, but, oh, I wish I could get going. Anyway, let's start with my Encyclia Garciana Alba. Poor little thing, poor big thing, became puppy toy. I managed to salvage most of the orchid but I had to remove a pseudobulb that became a chew thing for King. This orchid is super vigorous and I really, really want to get it off the mount. It has grown exponentially in the last year. Insanity, I would say, and it's still growing. And you can see by the concertina leaves and growths that it is not getting hydrated enough, even though I have it lying in a plate of water almost continuously but I really want to get it off the mount and put it into a very very big bowl sorry for the jiggle which I wish I had an inner pot that I could find for this size but I guess I'm just going to make it semi-hydro and really pump up that reservoir and like halfway so that the roots don't have to be looking or searching too much on the surface and I really want to get this off and out of the way. This orchid really is so vigorous and all the new growths that are coming now are already starting to show signs of struggle and I don't want that because if this doesn't grow properly, then buds have difficulty to grow through and bloom. Look at that. She is gorgeous. I might have to split her into pieces, I don't know, but this is what's on my mind for my encyclia is to make sure that I can, whether I have to split her or not, but get her in so that she can really, really take off and I can do her justice by keeping her wet without having to worry about where the growths are going. But she's going to be in a blooming frenzy despite being mangled by King for the next couple of months. So this is my first one I really want to address. She should go in here. That's the plan. I'm trying to think of as is, but once I do this project, that's when I can decide if that's even feasible because of the directions of the growth. Look at her, absolutely going crazy. Yeah, so that's my first one. There's more. I'll be right back. My next one is my little Sophronites Cattleya Cernua. Doing really well on the mount, as she would prefer to grow. I don't like this happening though. Twice a year, there's always an issue with the moss going this color. Now would be a good time to re-moss her. She's not growing roots yet. If I were to remoss using the same media around her again, it wouldn't be a problem to do it right now while it's cool, while the roots are not growing. There would not be a change. But what I'm going to do is put her into a ridiculous Lelia setup in a square pot like this. Actually, maybe even go up one size. I want her potted up because I don't want to keep doing this every six months. The next thing is, now would be all right because of the time of year, but the next time would be middle of the summer when she's actually not growing. She's somewhat not dormant, but there's no root growths. So I'm waiting for my Cernua to grow roots because I really want to get her into this setup with, um, which will be with Akadama and Terrarium Grit with a top layer of Lava Rock just like my Rapiculus Lelias are. Oh, I'm looking forward to doing this. She's finished blooming. Now it's time to wait for the new roots. And before the new roots don't come, I can't address her. 
Next up, two that I really, really want to address and have to address is my Lelia Amethyst here on the left and my CG Roebling Blue Indigo here on the right. There is no emergency. I always say if there's an emergency, get to it sooner rather than later. So there is no emergency in this case. It's just that both of them, you can see by the metal stake, this means that they've been in the pot three years. The amethyst still has room in the pot because of her growing habit, but the fact it's been three years by the sign of the stakes, I need to get in there, clean her up. She has never bloomed for me. Her newest needle from last year is going yellow. The second one behind that is going yellow. If there are issues in the pot, because the roots are growing right now, I want to clean her up. I'm gonna have to wait because of the weather conditions. So I don't see an emergency. I'm getting new roots. That is why I'm waiting. But I am repotting, even though she still has space on the surface, that pot needs to get cleaned up. I don't like the two of the newest growths actually yellowing. And on top of that, she's never bloomed for me. So maybe she's maturing right now, but is not blooming because she needs to get cleaned up either way. Oof, I want to get in there. Pronto. And my CG Roebling isn't an emergency either, starting with new growths. Sorry about that. Kids getting their run around before it comes down heavy and hard for the next couple of days. So she is growing her new growth on this lead and is starting on this lead. Roots are also starting as well. It's been in the pot for also three years now because of that metal stake is my indicator. I need to get in there, I need to clean her up. Not an emergency, otherwise I would go for it regardless of the weather and then bring her inside and baby her. But under these circumstances, I'm just going to hold out and wait so that I can do it when the weather is much more convenient for her to settle in after being disturbed. Next up on my list is my Peggy Ruth Carpenter. I'm going to take off these blooms, even though they're still nice, because they've got aphids on them. She has bloomed her socks off the last three months, so that's fine. Get, give her a rest. I really want to get into this pot, even though she has lots and lots and lots of space in there. But um, I would like to clean her up. She has a climbing habit. There's a new growth starting right here already and I just want to get in there. It's been two years that she's been in this pot and I believe there's probably two or three separate pieces in here, but my goodness, I'm anxious to get in there to give her a good, good cleanup and start her again. And while I'm at it, I might as well ask if anybody wants a piece before, now that there's time, I have about 10 days of bad weather that I'm not even going to be able to address my orchids in repotting. If somebody in Europe wants a piece from her, then let me know and I will pot her up separately, get her going, and when the time is good for shipping, I will ship her to you. So let me know in the comments below if you would like a piece of my Peggy Ruth Carpenter. Of course, she'll be nicely cleaned up, very well established, roots going and everything, new growths on all the pieces will be guaranteed. There's another one down there. So let me know. But yeah, I'm anxious to get into her as well. Goodness me, my list is getting longer and there's more. My little Lelia Biensis, recent acquisition from MSB Orchids in Germany. Let's see if you saw the unboxing. This one is not a good little back bulb. It's losing the leaves. I don't know if it's going to even have strength to develop a new growth but it's a second piece that is in this pot. Even though it's not an emergency, I am anxious to get it situated my way, as in Rapiculus styli in my collection in a pot, square pot like that. I really want to get in there. It doesn't have to happen now. It's just for aesthetics, because she could live in this little pot with the gravel for another two or three years. This is just me about aesthetics. And uh, yeah, 
I would like to get her situated as well, but you can see how nicely the roots are taking on moisture. That's great. For the first few days when she was with me, they were just rejecting everything I was trying to give her. So this is good. I think she'll be okay at this end. This little bulb that was just stuck in there, yeah. Collateral damage. But oof, I'm anxious to get her into one like that. The next one I really want to address, finally, I got this little platilla from Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents. And look at her, she is coming to life. So this one needs addressing as well. This is probably one of the first ones I will address when the weather takes a change and I can work without stressing about wind and having to worry about how the mic is picking up all the wind. But um, this one I will address. It's going to go into an inorganic setup for me, which will include Akadama, a lot of Akadama, seeing as it is a little bit more on the terrestrial side. And I can control Akadama really well when it comes to watering. So my Bletilla is a must. I'm really also very anxious to get into there. I don't know if you can hear it in the tone of my voice, but my little list at this moment is manageable. Each orchid is a day, a day's work, so to speak. And right now, you know, I'm at five. That's five days, that's a week. I'm going to have to start prioritizing who to address first when I have the right weather conditions. And Blatia will be one of them depending on how complicated or what hurdles I find in the repot, then if I can have time, I will double up and do the next orchid as well. But for example, the likes of C.G. Roebling, I can already see that that is going to be a four or five hour operation. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to get Platia situated into a mix that I would like to have. My next orchids to be addressed. Yes, there's two of them in here. From Jump Street, I potted up my Bulbophyllums. This little one here is the Contorti Sepalum. And you can see that I've got a new growth starting right there, which I want to get away from that Lekka piece. I don't want these humid temperatures right now to take out any new growths. Oh, a root is attached. Okay, we need to separate that a little bit so that the new growth isn't going to rot off. You can see the tiny little growth right there. So Contorti Sepalum is right here. And what I want it to be a Medusa, this is an Elizabeth and Buckleberry, unfortunately. But yeah, in the early days, I put them together. I didn't see the point of splitting them up into their own separate pots. But I think it is time to at least see what the Elizabeth and Buckleberry is doing. In case another new growth comes out of this lead, I might need to twist her around. The Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry will stay in this pot after I've cleaned her up. And the Contorti Sepalum will go into a little square pot all of its own. I've not had blooms from the Contorti Sepalum, but I haven't done this pot justice at all. It deserves better, and I want to address that as soon as I can get around to it, which was two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it's time. It's time to do them justice. And the last one that I have on my current list of urgencies, and this is not really an emergency because Jumbo Mickey is still asleep. But you can see by the size of the bulbs, if, for example, the new growths come out right up here, then I've got a problem and I have to get in there and repot. And I don't want to wait until the growths are X, Y, Z size in order to do that. I want to get in there before even anything starts to grow while it's still asleep. So this one is also something, now I could also say it's easy, get it out of its pot, put it in a bigger one and fill Lekka around it. But I don't want to do that either because the roots in there, some of them are dead. I would like to take you along and let you see what a catacetum that looks like after three years in a self-watering setup with Lekka and really, really take my time and show you so that for future reference, if anybody has any questions, I have that video to go and fall back on. So I could say, yep, this one's easy. It could be done indoors even, but not because I want to film it. So eh, come on weather. I don't want any new growths when I work on this one. If 
push comes to shove and it starts to do something before the weather turns and gives me some better days to film with, then I'm going to address it COC and I'll do it indoors and we'll figure it out. But I do want to take you along for this one. It's super interesting to see a pot with Lekka and a Catacetum, especially seeing as we haven't had a chance to see any roots based on my pots. So this is one out of pure interest and then as a reference. So yeah, this is my list of things to do ASAP. Well, as soon as weather permits and filming permits. And if you don't see any videos from me after this one, uh, then that is because of the weather. What's coming is pretty, pretty bad. It's like the calm before the storm. We had an example of that yesterday and that is not the end of it. More is on the way and apparently even worse, which is great for all my Vandacious orchids. They can all hang out and get soaked. That's fine, the temperatures are acceptable but it is not for filming and definitely not indoors with all the kilele of the animals and the disruptions going on there. I hope I have weather breaks that are long enough for me to do my projects. Otherwise, if you don't see a video from me, please know I'm hunkered down and the hatches have also been locked and sealed for what is coming up. Eek, is all I can say. <laughs> And no, I don't have a community tab yet, but those things take time. That is not me. I tried to see if I needed to unlock a feature, but that is YouTube and it can take until 3000 subscribers. It can take a week, it can take another year. I don't know how that works with the community tab. So that's a heads up if you don't see another video from me after this one. Thank you for going through my checklist with me. And again, remember, if you want a piece of the Peggy Ruth Carpenter, please let me know in the email below. First come, first serve. I do not charge for my cuts or divisions. All I need is to be reimbursed for the shipping. That is all. And again, unfortunately, Europe only. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for your time. So very much appreciated. I say it, I mean it. Stay safe. Bye.